Introducing my next build, we have my T9 steam engine. This engine is completely self-sufficient and tireable, and produces a whopping 584,832 free SU per block. So if you need any more than that, just slap another one on any side, and voila, more power. I have made two different schematics for this build, one for above ground, and one for below ground. With the below ground model, you'll have the lava at the same wide level as where you're walking. With the above ground model, I have it encased in frame glass, that way there is no spillage or leaking. With the above ground model, I'm just using frame glass trap doors to contain the lava. Now what was slightly upsetting to me when I was building this thing is the fact that I couldn't get this thing entirely symmetrical. Four blocks, one, two, three, and four are the only ones that are not symmetrical, which I feel is good enough. As we saw at the very start, this thing is self-starting with just three buckets of water, and it pumps water from this little enclosure right here. And here I have the lava filling method. So I have a mechanical pump which feeds lava into this spout, Bucket is right here contained on the depot. The mechanical arm will grab the lava filled bucket, put it in one of the blaze burners, and then deposit it onto the andesite funnel, which immediately drops onto the depot to then get refilled with lava, and the cycle repeats itself. So we have four fluid tanks that are three by three by four. The power generated by the steam engines is put into this encased chain drive, which is then fed into this large cogwheel into the rotational speed controller which is then brought down into this large cogwheel, doubling it so that the mechanical pumps have enough speed to pump water into the fluid tanks for self-sustainability. The shaft continues down until it hits this encased train drive, which splits to these two cogwheels, which each power the mechanical pump as well as the mechanical arm, which keeps the blaze burners fed with lava. Traveling further down, the lava generation method is the dripstone block with the lava on top, and the ratio that I'm going with is for every three blaze burners, I'm using four cauldrons. And that seems to be able to keep up just fine. If you feel that's too much or too little, you are free to add up to 12 more. Or detract as many as you like. Finally, the shaft comes all the way down here, hitting this vertical gearbox, letting off so the cogwheels power these mechanical pumps on each side, pulling the lava from the cauldrons into the fluid tank. And I am using a fluid tank buffer on both sides with 32 buckets possible storage on each side. On the underside, all the fluid pipes are connected together so that if there are any lava in these cauldrons, but not any in these cauldrons, this tank can still get filled up. Something to note when you are tiling this, if you are using the above ground model, if you want all the lava to be connected together, you will need to put pipes from one side to the other. But if you are using the below ground model, and all you'll need to do is break one of these fluid pipes and then replace it just to make sure all of them connect together as they should. Here's the easy way to set up the water. Wrench the cogwheel, flip the trapdoors, flood the stairs the trapdoors are placed on, shut the trapdoors, replace the cogwheel. Here's a couple ways you can set up the lava. Break the half slabs. There is a gap between the burners that if you're slow and careful, you can place the lava in the very back without issues. Once you've done the back two rows, the rest is simple. And then replace the half slabs. Alternatively, flip the trapdoors and place the lava one row at a time, lengthwise or widthwise, whichever is simpler for you, and then reflip the trapdoors. Depending on your rotation, you might need to do some of the following. Switching your RSC value from positive to negative, Flipping your water providing mechanical pumps, flipping your lava providing mechanical pumps, and flipping your lava gathering mechanical pumps. So, as I said, this thing is completely self-sufficient, pileable, and mostly symmetrical. This was my first real go at making a T9 engine, or any kind of steam engine in, in general, honestly, but I feel I've made a product that I can be proud of. What do you guys think? So, that should be everything that you need to know for this build. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you'd like the video. And if you're not already, I would love it if you would subscribe. Thank you for watching.